Hello, I'm Dan Tabor, former Blockbuster store manager turned Rotten Tomatoes film critic, and today I'm going to be reviewing Godzilla Minus One. This is the 33rd film in the Godzilla canon from Toho from Japan. This film is written and directed by Takashi Yamazaki. The last thing I remember seeing from him was the live-action Star Blazers, which was very faithful to the source, and I thought it was a lot of fun. Also did Returner, which I remember from my Blockbuster days, and, you know, he's back and he's writing and directing, like, when we thought that there could be nothing better than Shin Godzilla. Godzilla Minus One comes out and we're just, we gotta rethink everything. This film is, I don't sound hyperbolic, but it, it, it is great. I mean, the film is the story of a kamikaze pilot who lands on a island when he basically says he couldn't complete his mission because he said there was a problem with the ship. So he basically lands on this island so they can check a ship out overnight. And lo and behold, baby Godzilla shows up and attacks him and the mechanics. He jumps in his plane. He's about to fire his guns and he freezes. And all the mechanics are slaughtered by baby Godzilla, which is not the cute and fluffy baby Godzilla. It's the mean and nasty baby Godzilla. And it's just him and the one mechanic left. And they go back to Tokyo to kind of start their lives over after the war. And it's weird because this is like the third movie to take place in this sort of time period. We had The Boy and the Heron, Hayao Miyazaki's latest, that sort of takes place post-World War II in this weird sort of space. We had Oppenheimer, and now we have this. And what happens is he goes back to Japan and he is living in this rubble and he comes upon a young woman who has a baby and he takes them in. The young woman we discover found the baby and sort of took that baby in because the mother died and they become this weird found family unit that's super, super, super endearing. And he also kind of cements this bond with these other survivors around him, including these people that he works with, who he needs to find a job to make a lot of money. So the, the Japanese government pays him to go and collect landmines off the coast of Japan. So there's a lot of anti-government stuff in this. It's very, very, very anti-government. Some, I mean, that kind of, you know, is infused with some COVID metaphors as well. But what happens is Godzilla, of course, comes inland. He's huge now because it's been a couple years. He's grown up. He's a big boy. And the people have got to figure out how to get rid of Godzilla. And it's just the people, too, because the U.S. government doesn't want to help Japan. The Japanese government has been beaten. And the Japanese government just says, OK, you know, we're going to just let you guys handle this because we're too busy doing this. And the U.S. is like, we can't help you because, you know, we don't want to, like, get the Soviets all riled up by, you know, moving boats around. So it's just like this ragtag group of people in, in the rubble of Japan taking on Godzilla. Now, that on its own is good, but the way that they decide to dispatch him in this like college level way, I've seen enough Godzilla to say that, you know, sometimes the way they get rid of Godzilla is like, you just kind of deal with it. You just kind of say, okay, Godzilla's caused enough havoc. He's just gonna go away. So whatever they come up with, you just kind of roll with it. This solution, is damn near diabolical. And I thought it was honestly one of the best solutions ever. So they come out with this really great plan. They try to execute it. It doesn't go well and stuff happens. And unlike Shin Godzilla, this definitely goes the crowd pleaser route. I'm not gonna take that away from it any bit because after Shin Godzilla, you just feel completely hopeless. You felt like very nihilistic movie. Whereas this movie, it's a crowd pleaser. It leaves you on a note of hope. And it also leaves you thinking that there could be more Godzilla. So that's even better. So Godzilla minus one, it's got a lot of great performances. It's got a rock solid script. It's got a new take on Godzilla that's awesome and pretty badass. Like when his plates go, when he charges and his plates move, it's just, it, it's so non-practical, but it's so badass that you just roll with it. And the story, the people in this, just like you really root for them. And it's really rare in these movies that you're rooting for the people and not for the monster. But here, especially in some of the Toho stuff, because in some, some of the Toho stuff, you're just waiting for the monsters to show up. But in this one, you're, you're in it 100% with the people the pilot, the woman, their kid, the doctor who is like working on a boat collecting landmines who comes up with this crazy idea. You're just in it and 110%. I have to say this is 
one of the best Godzilla movies, bar none, ever. I mean, it's up there with Shin Godzilla. It, I mean, Shin Godzilla I like because it's so nihilistic, but this one is just so good because I, I had so much fun and it was such a crap pleaser. And I, I set them on equal paths. To try and redo the original is like, would almost be unheard of, but they've done it and it's great and you should go see it. So if you enjoyed my review, please like and follow me and thank you for watching.